Tonight, from Hollywood, The Barbara Stanwyck Show. A woman who could never forget that she had come from the wrong side of the tracks is the subject of our story tonight. Written by Jerome Gruskin and directed by Jacques Tournier. In it, I wear the big hats and flowing costumes of 1905. A period when opportunities were limited for most women, but not for one driven by bitter ambition. And now in just 60 seconds, the first act of The Golden Acres. Willistown, USA, 1905. The unchanging heart of America. Same factories, same houses, same old loafers in the courthouse benches. <laughs> It's good to be home again, Dad. You ought to come home more often, son. Chicago isn't so far away. I know. You seen Avis Fleming lately? You can't live in this town without seeing Avis somewhere. Running things like nobody else has a lick of common sense. Then even she hasn't changed. Son, did you come back here on account of Avis Fleming? Well, that's one reason. I'm sorry to hear that, Dexter. I thought you'd gotten her out of your system. Well, I haven't. But don't worry, Dad. I'm going to. See you later. Then you're talking like a fool. I won't argue about it, sister. I'm going to do it. And when I do, I'll need some money. That's right, Ben. If you want to marry Velma, that's your business. They've been going together 15 years. How much longer do you want them to wait? Oh, keep out of this, Collins. I won't keep out of it. I'm talking for myself, too. It's about time I had me a family, too. See, now he wants to get married. Monkey sees, monkey does. Living like this, sister, sticking this close together all this time, it just ain't right. Isn't, not ain't. Now, haven't I made a nice home for you boys, as Papa wanted me to? Yes, but it's always been your home, Avis. We can't sit in the parlor, we can't sit in the living room. Well, now, you don't think Velma Shane's going to allow Ben to drop cigar ashes all over her home. Velma's a good woman. There's plenty of good women in this town, Avis. Only the way you look down your nose at them, you never see nothing but their shin bones. And why? Papa and Mama was just plain folks. At least Papa wore his coat to dinner. Oh, never mind that. It's been three years since Papa died, and the state ain't been divided up yet. That's right, Avis. There's enough to go around for all of us. All I want is my fair share. Now, I figure Collins and me will keep the store. You can have a half interest in the real estate. Well, that's very generous of you. You know what that real estate's worth? No, you tell me. About a hundred thousand dollars. That right, Collins? Must be, at least. Now, you listen to me. This is no time to be thinking of getting married or dividing our estate. Now, if you'll just have a little patience, there'll be more. A lot more. Ready for coffee now, Miss Davis? Yes, but we'll have it on the porch. It's too hot in here. Now, you come outside and I'll tell you how we're going to get five times one hundred thousand. Five times. What's she talking about? Oh, she's just trying to put us off. She don't want us to get married. I don't know how Papa let her grow up so ornery anyway. Should have taken a stick to her. Oh, she's all right. She's just scared, that's all. Scared? Avis? Scared what? Oh, I don't rightly know, Collins. Being decent, I guess. Dexter? Dexter Willis. Hello, Avis. Why are you staring at me that way? Have I changed so much? You haven't changed at all. Nor have you. <laughs> what are you doing out here among the geraniums? Why didn't you ring the bell? Oh, I heard an argument. So I uh, came over here out of earshot. Oh, my brothers. Dexter, I... I was awfully sorry to hear about your wife. Well, that was five years ago. So it was five years ago, wasn't it? I don't know how time flies. It seems like only yesterday when I read the headline, Dexter Willis elopes with Janice Harvey. Headline? I wrote you a letter. Oh, I got it. The next day. Well, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, don't apologize. You needed a wife who could be a credit to you. Janice could, I couldn't. I came from the other side of town. But since then, I've learned you don't sit around envying people for being what they are. You work hard at being like them. 
Oh, boys, it's Dexter Willis. It's all right. I'm very glad to see him. Of course. Well, well, Dexter. Well, Ben, how are you, Collins? What brings you to Willis Town, Dexter? Visiting your father? Uh-huh. I was here a year ago, Avis, but you were away. Oh, Collins and I went up to St. Louis to see the World's Fair. I suppose you remarried. No. Sit down, Dex. Oh. Cassie. Mr. Willis. <laughs> nice to see you again. So nice to see you. Coffee, Dex? Thank you. How's law business up in Chicago? Oh, I managed to keep busy. Oh, you managed to keep pretty busy in Willis Town, too, as I remember. Old Dex always had an office full of people, needed a lawyer, couldn't afford to pay for one. <laughs> you still have the same kind of clients? <laughs> More or less. Well, money won't buy nothing we're gonna need a hundred years from now, eh, Dexter? <laughs> Speaking of money, what's that new plan of yours, Avis? Oh, it'll wait, it'll wait. Why? Dexter's practically a member of the family. At least he was once, weren't you, Dex? Almost. So there's no need for secrets. Besides, he heard you boys arguing when he came up. Sometimes you do drive a man to temper. Ben is going to get married. Come inside. I'll tell you my plan. Well, Ben, congratulations. Who's the lucky lady? The machine. Oh, the girl who runs the Bonton dress shop. Well, <clears throat> Velma's not exactly a girl anymore. She used to be a perfect 36, but that number's gone up. That's enough, Collins. Well, anyway, that's what the argument is about. Ben and Collins want to divide Papa's estate, and I'm against it. Dexter ain't interested in that, sister. Well, he might be. He's an attorney. He might be able to help us settle the argument. <laughs> I doubt it. I want you to pay attention, you two. I'm about to sew up the biggest real estate deal in the history of Willistown. Have you ever heard of the Rockwell Rubber Company of Chicago? Yes. It's one of the biggest in the country. You hear that, boys? And they're going to be even bigger. They're going to make rubber tires for automobiles. Automobiles? I wouldn't have one of them darn noisy things if you gave it to me. I would. Never replace a horse. But the Rockwell people think they will. And they're going to build a big factory here, five miles out of town on old Tom Golden's farm. Tom Golden was in the store yesterday. Funny he never mentioned it. He doesn't know about it. And how do you know about it? Remember when I went up to the city last month? I heard about it at a dinner party. Well, what's that got to do with us? The Rockwell people didn't deal directly with Tom because they weren't too sure they wanted the property, but they were almost sure. So I cashed in some of the bonds Mama left me and took an option on the place. You took an option on Tom Golden's farm? A $5,000 option against a purchase price of 45000 Why? Oh, shut up, Collins, and listen. To get it free and clear, we'll take about $100,000. A hundred thousand? But the Rockwell people will pay a half a million dollars for it. Why will they? Because it's on the river and they need the water, and that gives us a profit of 400000 But that farm's all Tom Golden's got to leave to his boys, and you're aiming to cheat him out of it? I'm not cheating him out of it. He was delighted to sell it for 45000 how delighted do you think he's going to be when you turn around and sell it for all that money? Now, wait a minute. You swing this deal, you've got to pay up the mortgages and back taxes. That's right. How are you going to raise the cash? We're going to mortgage everything we've got. No. And we're coming out with a half a million dollars. Now, you listen to me, sister. I ain't raising one cent to buy Tom Golden's farm. And if he wants to sell, them Chicago people can deal direct with him. Hallelujah, Ben. They'll deal with me. I have a date. Excuse me, Dexter. Me too. We'll talk about this later. They wouldn't have a cent if it wasn't for me. Sometimes I even doubt their papa's children. You would have been very proud of you, Avis. You really think so? I think you've surpassed even his fondest expectations. Are you making fun of me? No. I never could tell if you were or you weren't. You were always so superior. 
Even when I loved you the most, I hated you for that. Did I seem superior? I never felt superior. You're a Willis, aren't you? Money is a great leveler. Once the Willises and the Harveys were the first families of Willistown. Now it's your turn. Yes. And oh, it's going to feel good to have money. Real money. It is the leveler, isn't it? Yes, Avis. It is. I was hoping you'd do that. Avis, why don't you tear up your option on Tom Golden's farm? Why? You don't need it. Yes, but why should I pass up a fortune? You really don't know, do you? No, I don't know. Your brothers know. All my brothers are children. Well, sometimes children think straighter than we do. There, yeah, that's what I mean. The same old superiority. We're right back where we were 20 years ago. But you're on the right side of town now, aren't you, Avis? Well, I told Dad I'd spend the evening with him. I'd better get along. But, Dex, you've got to understand. We've got to talk this thing out. Will you have dinner with me tomorrow night? Sure. Why not? He's a fine man, Miss Avis. If I were you, I wouldn't let him get away again. I don't intend to. I've been asked many a time to circumvent the letter of the law, but by the Lord Harry, never to commit a felony. Your father left no will, Miss Avis. Now you sit there and ask me to say he did. And what's more, forge one to prove it. This is roughly what I want. Uh, just put it in legal terminology and we'll both sign it as witness. I don't think you understand me, Miss Avis. I said your father died in testate. I was his attorney and if necessary, I will testify to that. I don't think you will. I'm sorry to remind you of this, but I think it will help us to understand each other a little better. What is this? Oh, some old bills of sale, canceled checks, and evidence that you used your power of attorney to embezzle $10,000 from Papa's estate. You see, I went over Papa's books very carefully after he died. Miss Avis, let me explain. Oh, you don't have to. I know your wife was very ill for years, and you had to send Dex through law school. Why didn't you ever say anything? Well, I felt the money was being used for a good cause. And please don't worry, Dex will never find out. I'll, I'll give back all I can. I have $5,000 in the bank. You want the money. Just draw up the will and we'll forget the rest. But don't you see what you're asking me to do is... Illegal, Mr. Willis? Well, it's 10.30, and I have many things to do. Just draw up the will. I'll be back at 5 for it. Dexter's here, Miss Avis. Oh, hello, Dex. Come in. Hello, Avis. Busy? I'll only be a moment. Fix yourself a toddy, one for me, too. I dropped by your house this afternoon. You were out. I ran over to Bella Vista. Bella Vista? Yes. I had a little business to take care of. Oh. oh subject to terms and conditions, etc. Et Interest to be paid. Thank you. It's a lot of paperwork. Oh, well, I had to rush things through. Mr. Wainwright, the vice president of Rockwell, is coming here tomorrow. Well, then you're going through with the deal. Of course. Did Ben and Collins agree? Not yet, but they will. Agree to what? Good evening, Ben, Collins. Good evening, Dexter. Agree to what, sister? 
Why don't you boys go upstairs and freshen up a bit? Dinner will be served in a few minutes, and we'll discuss this later. And we'll discuss it right now, sister. If Dexter don't mind, another family discussion. No. Go right ahead. What is it you're so all fired sure we'll agree to? To sign the mortgages on our property. Mortgage? Do you mean to tell me you got the downright bill? Ben, gold? I've had a very trying day. We I... had the gall, all right. I told you, sister, I ain't gonna have nothing to do with this. Then I don't want to argue. It's all arranged. Mr. Wainwright will be here tomorrow. Sister, how do you sleep nights? Dexter, you used to be able to talk sense to her. Ain't you got nothing to say? I think the less I have to say, the better. I ain't gonna sign no mortgage, and I ain't gonna exercise no option on the Golden Acres. And I don't want to hear no more about it. Now, you excuse us, Dexter. We'll go upstairs and wash up. Come back here, both of you. Now, I don't want to get rough with you boys, but you'll sign these papers tonight or tomorrow I will take you into court. To court? To prove that every cent you've got belongs to me. How do you expect to prove a thing like that? When Papa died, he left a will. A will? Naming me sole heir to his estate. That's a lie. Papa never made no will. Well, here's a copy. And Dexter's father has the original. Last will and testament to Samuel Fleming. That's Papa's signature, all right? Read it through, Ben. Ben, how could he have done a thing like this to us, his own sons? Oh, I don't understand this, sister. Why did you and why did... Mr. Willis, keep it secret all these years. Because I asked him to. I didn't want to hurt your feelings or Colin's. I find this hard to believe. Oh, it's very simple. Papa loved you both very much. But he knew I had a better business head. Why, that's real considerate of you, Avis. I guess if we'd signed them papers right away, You'd have given us our fair share and never mentioned the will. That's right. Oh, don't take it so hard, Ben. Papa wanted me to take care of you, and I intend to. I think that's real nice of her. Don't you, Ben? Oh, you shut up. Dinner is just about ready, Miss Avis. I don't feel hungry tonight. Excuse me, Dexter. Well, I'm hungry. I'm right behind you, Cassie. What's for supper? Fried chicken, Mr. Collins. I sure hated to do that to Ben. Thanks to you, I had the courage. Thanks to me. You once taught me a very important lesson. Don't let the heart rule the head. I taught you that? You married Janice, didn't you? Yes, Avis, I did. Shall we go into dinner? I think you'll find everything in order, Fred, including my power of attorney. Yes, it seems to be in order, all right. Ben's signature looks a little peculiar. Well, he wasn't feeling too well last night. I've got the check all ready, Miss Avis. Just endorse it, and I'll deposit it to your account. That's an awful lot of money, Miss Avis. Yes, isn't it? Sure, I'm uh, curious to know what kind of business deal you and your brothers are cooking up. Well, you'll read all about it in the papers. And when the deal is concluded, Fred, we'll deposit so much money in your bank, you'll be able to declare a dividend. <laughs> sure look forward to that. Well, thank you. You've been most helpful. You're certainly welcome, Miss Dexter. Nice to see you again, Fred. Nice to see you again, Dexter. You, uh, by any chance, thinking of settling down in Willistown again? No, I'm going back to Chicago in a day or two. The hustle bustle here is too much for me. Goodbye, Miss Avis. Goodbye. Dexter. Fred. Ah, oh, that's that. Now all we have to do is wait for Wainwright to arrive, sign the papers. I'll pick up my option on the Golden Acres, and by the end of the week, I'll be the richest woman in this end of the state. <laughs> 
Oh, Dexter, I've never felt so good in my entire life. Well, you never look prettier. Success agrees with you. Success agrees with everybody. Once you've had it, you'll know. Oh, well, I've given up my dream of climbing the rainbow. Dream? Oh, no. It's hard-headed planning that counts. Grabbing your opportunities and pushing them through no matter what. Kathy. Hi, You've earned yourself a nice cold drink. Cassie, would you make a pitcher of lemonade and crush some strawberries in it? Yes, Miss Davis. This telegram just came for you. Oh, thank you. It's from Wainwright. He isn't coming. He... He says his attorney will call Davis, us. listen. How do you like that after the way I rushed things through? If I had Wainwright here, I... I suppose I should have told you this sooner. I'm Wainwright's attorney. You? When he found out I was from this part of the country, he asked me to come down here and pick the better of the two locations. You work for the Rockwell Company? Well, I'm not as unsuccessful as I was. That's why you went to Bella Vista yesterday. Mm-hmm. Dexter, you wouldn't... Recommend the Bella Vista property? No. Uh, thank you. Oh, don't thank me. Even at your price, the Golden Acres were the better buy. Well... I'll see you at the bank. Say, tomorrow morning at 10. Don't be late. I want to get the early express back to Chicago. Oh, by the way, here's my check for $10,000. Dad told me what had happened. But I don't want this. It, it wasn't a matter of money. What was it a matter of, Avis? Well, you know, I, I had to get Ben and Collins in line. I... I, I was desperate. It was my one chance to show you. Show me what? That I just wasn't Avis Fleming, the little storekeeper's daughter, the same nobody you walked out on. Is that why you think I... Oh, yes, you jilted me, and it took me a long time to get over it, but you were right to marry Janice. I... I just wasn't in her class. No, you weren't. I loved you, Avis, but I was afraid of you. That's why I walked out on you. You were... Ambitious and conniving. And now you're worse. You're a liar and a cheat. I don't understand. Why did you come back? I hoped that the years were, had softened you a little bit. Had changed you into... into what you might have been. Well... I was wrong. The forged will. My option on the Golden Acres. That's that. That's a real decent thing you've done. I'm proud of you, sister. Oh, don't get sentimental. That's more than I can stand. A little humility never hurt nobody. I saw old Dex downtown this morning. You what? Oh, I sure. I told him you backed out of the deal and he could negotiate with Tom Golden direct. When would you never learn to mind your own business? I told you not to say anything until tomorrow, after I'd left for Mackinac. Now you've spoiled everything. But not for me. Well, I guess I'll mosey along. I got a date with Velma. Mind if I tag along, Ben? Yes, I do mind. You get a gal of your own. It's time we were all getting married. See you later, Dexter. Don't just stand there. Come on. Weren't my men wonderful? Kent Smith as the Chicago lawyer, and my two brothers. The taller one was John McIver. The wider one was Robert M. Hart. And on the set, we called them the Bobsy Twins. Join us again next week. Good night. Good night.